suspicion, so I must act fast. Wow! What is this, the future? This is beautiful. Dancing airport. Wait a minute. What was I doing? Oh, sh the mission. I gotta catch a plane to Shenzhou. Wait a second. God, this place is not even open to the public yet. Stupid! Stupid! What am I gonna do? Oh, my mission. What? I'm stuck way out here in Daqing. God! <laughs> Beijing Daxing International Airport has the world's largest single building airport terminal. With a total surface area of 1.4 million square meters, it is a comprehensive transport hub combining light rail, intercity railway, expressway, and airport. By 2022, the airport is expected to reach a throughput of 45 million passengers. The 12.1 billion US dollars mega project proves that China's transport infrastructure is ahead of the world. Airport is designed as a city hub, rather than only like a transportation uh, like a hub, because it contains a lot of city urban life function into this airport. The integrated transport hub aligned with the city clusters identified in the 13th five-year plan, and also with the synergies that are capable of with the proximities of transport networks, create an incredibly strong strategy for the economic development of China. Welcome. Okay, so Da Xing International Airport isn't open to the public quite yet, but I still need to get to Zhengzhou. How am I going to get to Zhengzhou? Okay, so in the US, I really only have two options. But in China, there is a third option. So let's do the math. From Daxing to Zhengzhou, 1.5 hours. Two hour flight. An hour to Beijing. So a train ride is about three and a half hours. So if I were to go by car, about 5.5 hours. If I took a plane, 4.5 hours. High speed rail, 4.5. Okay, because it's more comfortable, cheaper, and more relaxing, I'm gonna take the train. I gotta get the Beijing Xi. If you build road, you make people understand outside world and then they try to connect to the world. In China, we have a very interesting saying, if you want to be rich, you have to build the road first. The road system and the railway system is very important because we uh, used to be an agriculture society. A lot of that rural area, you have to build the road first. Well, high-speed rail and road networks are a relatively cost-effective and fast way for China to realize its economic ambitions. Well, I think it makes a fundamental impact and a positive impact on China's economy. Integrated transport networks help the passage of, of goods and the movement of trade increase. It also, good networks increase catchment areas for transport and that inevitably gives a knock-on effect into the economy. For four decades, infrastructure in China has developed by leaps and bounds. Take transport development, for example. Highway length has gone from 120,000 kilometers in 1978 to 4.05 million kilometers in 2018, while railway length has gone from 50,000 kilometers in 1978 to 130,000 kilometers in 2018. In 2018, at least 130 million express parcels traveled along China's transport network daily. The annual number of express delivery of physical goods reached 50.7 billion in China, generating over 1 trillion US dollars in retail income. China's transport infrastructure development has boosted its miraculous economic growth. Since 2000, 
2011, they've been building 6,000 miles of motorway every year. 6,000 miles a year! It beggars belief, and it's not like the terrain is easy. I'm telling you, in Britain, we're doomed. We're doomed. I think the gap is, is the West's issue, the rest of the world, not China. China is answering the difficult questions for modern society going forward. Let me give you some examples, okay. Um, let's take, take rail. Shanghai has 60, 675 kilometers of rail. It runs incredibly efficiently. These are incredible figures, and all of it is done with this incredible level of efficiency. Yeah, yeah. China using uh, 30 years to catch up with the world, like uh, a lot of infrastructure improved. Still, we have a lot of uh, place which we, we didn't touch on, and then uh, still lack of a lot of like uh, service getting there, access to there. Currently, no metros in China operate around the clock throughout the year. Among the world's top 50 busiest airports in 2016, nine are in China and 16 in the US. In China, among its 1.4 billion people, only fewer than 400 million travel by air. Although China's transport infrastructure is continuously expanding, issues still exist in terms of density, average per capita, low efficiency, and unreasonable planning. Take railway for example. China's total railway length is only second to the US, but its average density per capita still lags largely behind the world average. China still needs to comprehensively develop its transport infrastructure. Ah, come on! Come on, it's so bad! How come? China has invested so much money in their infrastructure. They've made so many improvements. They've optimized. But whenever you get on the road, you can't get anywhere. Ah, I need to get to the train station. Well, I think uh, in China, last uh, few decades, we already have a very strong top-down system to plan the whole China and then the big cities and then uh, to the province level. But all this uh, big plan, rural area, uh, which nowadays in China is still lack of a lot of infrastructures. Mm. We have the two ways to make a better life in the countryside. One is like uh, we try to provide road infrastructures as abilities to make people have uh, transportation that uh, can, can have all the whatever information or like a goods can uh, sell out. But in the same time, we also need to uh, try to see how we can uh, move people out to the city and then provide them uh, better like, uh, conditions. If you're improving road connections into a rural area, that's not the answer in itself. Once you get that road there, then the community, the society, the development plan at the end of those road networks into the rural areas needs to be sustainable, it needs to be vibrant, it needs to be community-based. And, and by doing that, then it makes a lot of sense. I think infrastructure still have a lot of things to do in China. Yeah. We have uh, a lot of like, opportunity to use a centralized uh, the system into like, a decentralized system. China's development doesn't solely rely on its powerful transport arteries. Capillary engineering involving streets and rural roads are equally important, particularly in impoverished Midwestern areas. Adapting a zip line and building a road may open up the door that lifts the people out of poverty and towards prosperity. In Guizhou, the only Chinese province without a plane, over 20,000 bridges connect traffic in the mountains. In 2018, 8,172 kilometers of rural roads were upgraded or built in Guizhou. Accessibility to the mountainous areas was enhanced and economic growth promoted. Guizhou became the only province in a decade whose GDP grew by over threefold. Excavator production and marketing are closely connected to transport infrastructure development. In 2018, China sold a total of 203,426 excavators, among which the percentage of smaller excavators for farm irrigation grew the most by 27.5%. 
As China develops large transport infrastructure, it also increases the intensity in developing small-scale transport infrastructure that concerns the life of every Chinese. We need to improve a lot of things, especially in the governance system, so that uh, we can uh, also the market-driven, also the small system rather than big system only. I think uh, next uh, decades that if we really f try to build up uh, a better system that uh, can uh, guide in the investment in the right time, right place. If you can put a transport hub in strategic locations which tie in with the urban clusters, which tie in with the corridors for road and rail that are properly networked across the nation, then you supergroup some of the main international and domestic airports. That's an incredibly strong formula for a very efficient country. You've got policies for the development of high-speed rail and road and airports and then clustering the airports. All of this together creates a comprehensive plan. So I think the main issue is to stick to the plan. Development is the only way forward. Speeding up infrastructure construction, thoroughly executing new development ideas, and building a modern economy are necessary. Apart from the conventional infrastructure such as transport, energy sources, and water conservancy, China has been striving to achieve new growth points in new infrastructure such as 5G AI, industrial internet, and fiber optic communication. By the end of August 2018, Trans-Eurasia Logistics, which connects 44 cities in 15 European countries as they travel between China, Europe, and the Belt and Road countries, has 65 routes that carry over 11,000 trains transporting 920,000 goods containers. Supported by its powerful transport infrastructure, China joins hands with the Belt and Road countries and grow together. In the future, China will continue to intensify its investment in different infrastructure development. In general, investment in infrastructure development will increase by 10% in 2019, which will be a key force that continues to drive economic growth. Why are you so hurry? I, 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 I gotta get to Zhengzhou. There's this big succulent yellow river fish. I gotta get it for my wife, man. Do you have mobile for us? Yeah, of course. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Duh, God, why didn't I think of that? Yes, online shopping. Hey, Siri, can you help me? What's up? I need to order a big yellow river fish off of Taobao. You will receive the Yellow River carp from Zhengzhou at 7.30 this evening. Perfect. See, in China, there are more convenient ways to get what you want than going 600 kilometers by railway. Internet shopping. Online shopping is very developed in China, but it's based on the infrastructure of China. But we'll talk about internet economy next time. For now, I gotta get back to my wife, because there's a fish coming. <laughs>